1997. There is terror in the streets. An AI computer defense system by the name of Skynet goes rogue, and makes the decision to exterminate the human race to preserve its own existence. People have been warned of this day for a long time. The seeds were already planted years ago. But somehow, everyone failed to see the signs. A massive company decided to push the envelope a little too far, and now the machines are pushing back. By 2029, the human race is all but completely eradicated. The very technology we use to avoid extinction, ultimately becoming it. This is a summary of the plot of The Terminator, a 1984 action film that in many ways was ahead of its time. 2015 marks the founding of OpenAI, the company behind some of the most innovative technologies in the field. In their earlier years, they spent their time working on iterations of GPT, Tesla's self-driving cars, and experimenting with deep reinforcement learning. In April of 2019, a team of five Dota 2 AI bots called OpenAI5 would go on to overtake the game's most dominant champions, OG, in a professional setting, winning 2-0. But in the last two to three years is where they've really begun to make a bigger splash than ever before. If I were to use one word to describe 2023, it would be AI. Never before have I seen two letters cause so much discourse. While DALL-E was getting its start in 2021, the rise of ChatGPT and progression in AI artwork is impossible to miss and has also led to a lot of debate over the ethics, legality, and profitability of using these models in lieu of actual artists. We're in an unprecedented time for technology. Let's just hope we make the right decision now to avoid a different precedent. Brightest minds gathered this week to talk about the progress and potential of artificial intelligence, and they admit they are worried. It can analyze thousands of words of text to create almost anything from coding video games to passing standardized tests. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. While the actual existence of AI neural networks is quite new, humanity's concerns of AI takeover have long been prevalent in the realm of fiction. Terminator is far from the first case of AI being presented as a threat. 2001 A Space Odyssey presents HAL 9000, an AI in charge of maintaining functions of the ship, that later makes the decision to eliminate the crew to satisfy its conflicting missions. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep is set in a world with replicants, human-like robots that blur the line between man and machine. The central conflict coming from the difference between man and replicants, if there even is one. A year earlier saw the release of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, the story of a computer superintelligence that ultimately wipes out humanity aside from five individuals, subjecting them to tortures beyond possibility. The 1927 film Metropolis is the first film to have an AI on the silver screen, taking the form of a humanoid robot known as the Machine Minge that starts a revolt in the working class, an antagonistic role in the story. Even before film, artificial intelligence is villainized. In a 1920 play entitled R.U.R., there's a race of self-replicating robot slaves that revolt against their human masters, with similar commentary being found in Detroit Become Human, a 2018 video game about androids, which makes similar comparisons between machines and slavery. But the first fictional AI dates all the way back to a time before any level of advanced technology or microchips. The Iliad was a poem written in 800 BC, and depicts a version of Hephaestus, the Greek god of fire and, among other things, metalworking, who has the power to create intelligent machines. The poem was written by the ancient Greek writer Homer. <laughs> It's safe to say a lot has changed in the last 3,000 years, but we as humans have always had an interest, and equal amount of anxiety, in creating life where there shouldn't be. And if AI is Frankenstein's monster, then it's time to get acquainted with the man himself. OpenAI was founded by 12 different people, and largely funded by entrepreneur Elon Musk. While they had other pet projects, OpenAI would be known by all after the launch and subsequent backlash caused by DALL-E, with DALL-E Mini launching in July of 2022. 
It's worth mentioning that Dolly Mini is not an OpenAI product, but instead an open source website that used the original Dolly as a base. But being the ones behind this technology, OpenAI received a ton of attention, both positive from the general public, and negative from both hobby and professional artists. AI-generated images and the newfound popularity of ChatGPT have led to a lot of discussion and debates about art and creativity, mostly split into two camps. The AI tech bros, talking about how they can use it to optimize and automate whatever they're up to, and the people who'd be getting replaced by it, mostly artists and writers. I'm sure everyone watching is familiar with the writer strike that happened last year. A strike which began for a multitude of reasons. Better pay, better working conditions, along with concerns that big media companies would begin to replace writers with a much cheaper, faster candidate, AI. Hello, Writers Guild! Writers are already overworked and underpaid for what they're actually responsible for. Writing an entire series of television is a monumental task, made only harder by corporate overlords hiring smaller and smaller teams. The Writers Guild weren't a big fan of this. The strike lasted 148 days, but by the end of things, both parties walked away happy. But if you notice the output of Hollywood being a bit lighter as of late, AI is one of many things to blame. But while the writer's strike was successful, another faucet of the industry might not be so lucky. There's another profession that AI is risking the future replacement of. An AI I haven't even brought up yet. Voice actors. Sites like 15AI allow for almost seamless text-to-speech synthesizing, which has been used mainly for meme purposes. Getting any fictional character or real person to say whatever you want. While at the moment it's all well and good, AI voices are about to become a lot more common, specifically in games. Recently, SAG-AFTRA, the union responsible for actors, voice actors, and voiceover artists, have signed off on the use of AI in video games. I see where this decision is coming from. Vaudeville is a murder mystery game that uses AI technology to allow the player to have complex and intricate conversations with NPC characters, without falling into the pitfalls of a narrow script. In the past, games like Oblivion had voice actors reading off unconnected dialogue sheets for hours on end, which simulated these sorts of conversations, but would occasionally miss the mark with some sort of mistake. We heard that thieves broke into the Arcane University, the Imperial Legion compound, and the temple all on the same night. Wait a minute, let me do that one again. I heard that- AI would allow you to have full-on intellectual dialogue with fictional characters. However, this poses a risk to voice actors. When AI is on the table, there isn't anything stopping a massive AAA company from saving a ton of money by using AI speech synthesis instead of hiring voice actors. And by allowing the use of AI in games, it leaves voice actors in an awkward position and ultimately feeling betrayed. Less than a year earlier, SAG AFTRA went on a massive actor's strike, the actors standing in solidarity with the writers. It seems voiceover artists wouldn't get this liberty. One of the more popular uses of ChatGPT is just as problematic. The education system we go through is heavily reliant on day-to-day -day questions and essays, but there isn't currently anything stopping students from just using AI to quickly answer their questions for them, sparking concern among teachers. Computers win, human race is doomed. <laughs> Plagiarism has always been a serious issue with the rise of the internet, but when you plagiarize an unpublished work written by an AI, it's almost undetectable. And even if schools go about banning GPT in class, yep, you're there's nothing stopping students from just using it at home. And as the language models improve more and more, we'll eventually see a day where it's impossible to differentiate a human essay from a computer's. Of course, there is a silver lining here. The school system is often criticized for being outdated. Most textbooks are decades old and may not have information that holds up to modern standards. With the rise of AI, the school system may be pressured to adapt and change with the times, in one way or another. Each of the issues I'm bringing up stand on their own as concerns, but each one of these factors combined is something impossible to ignore. Alongside writers, voice actors, and educators, YouTube entertainers can be added to that list too. Faceless channels is a term you've likely seen popping up lately. 
often on Twitter, where the people behind them brag about how much money they're making with zero actual work. These things use AI to completely automate content creation, leading to what's essentially free money. Faceless channels have always existed, even before AI, in the form of companies like Spill, Kurgskazakt, or Infographics Show. But these channels have actual effort behind them. The Kurgskazat team spends hundreds of hours making their own 100% original visuals and music. But when you bring AI into things, let's just say there's a reason the people behind these channels brag about numbers instead of artistic intent. Did you know that there's a character this that man loves Marvel Rubik's Cube so much? What happens if you shut the train and all the train 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 These channels are faceless because they don't show their faces, but also in the fact that they have no personality, no humanity attached, and are interchangeable. In fact, it's not uncommon for one individual to be behind several channels. To show how soulless this content is, I'm going to use ChatGPT, a text to speech generator, and Dolly Mini to demonstrate how soulless these videos are. Did you know? Earth is not a perfect sphere. Due to its rotation, our planet is slightly flattened at the poles and bulging at the equator, making it an oblate spheroid. So, when you picture Earth, think more like a squished beach ball than a perfect circle. Science is fascinating. But the thing with these channels is that they're always soulless and bland. But what if one of these garbage AI content farms was a skinwalker acting as someone else? Quebblecop is a YouTuber originally known for doing this. But with the rise of AI, he's decided to use his office and staff to make the world's first AI-replaced YouTuber. And to say the public response has been negative would be an understatement. Quebblecop has become enemy number one to anyone against AI. But it doesn't even seem to have phased him. If anything, he's embracing his role as a heel in the YouTube community. I'd hate to sound like I'm agreeing with his use of AI, as morally I don't, but if I were in Quebblecop's position, I'd probably do the same thing. He built his career not on creative projects, but on repetitive gaming videos. His audience doesn't really care about him because they aren't old enough to, so he might as well do something with his team of people. And I'll be honest, I haven't seen any arguments good enough to convince me otherwise. Many are saying that he's throwing away his legacy and community reputation by doing this, but if I had to choose between being a martyr for a new era or being just another YouTube gamer, I think the choice is obvious. And no amount of Twitter users yelling AI bad is going to convince him otherwise. But I do have a problem with it. In his announcement video for Quebblecop AI 2.0, he makes the claim that AI generated content will equal the playing field and raise the accessibility of content creation. Storytelling. Lower the barriers of entry and share themselves with the world. And even if that were true, I wouldn't argue that to be a good thing. What makes a YouTuber? To me, it's a combination of quality videos, accessible videos, and branding. All of which are things you improve at with time. Many would argue that getting popular on YouTube is just dumb luck, but an important part of it is knowing what to do when you finally do have that attention. By relegating all that to the click of a button, sure it levels the playing field, but the person hitting the upload button isn't the YouTuber. It's like the people who enter a prompt, let AI generate an image, and then claim they're an artist. Sure, you could improve at explaining what you want the program to make, but when the piece is done, you've offered little more than guidelines. I'd hate to sound elitist here, but if you want to be a YouTuber, get better at making videos instead of letting AI be a YouTuber for you. So we've seen some of the horrors made when you rely too heavily on AI, but there are some actual ways to use it without sacrificing your creativity. Florida Men is what I'd consider one of my best videos, and there were several small but impactful uses that allow AI to actually help you achieve your creative vision. For the intro of the video, I used mugshots from various Florida Man stories. However, the mugshots were all posted in portrait mode, so I used an AI image website to extend the images and generate some shoulders. I used an AI image to depict a Florida man without singling out any one person. I used FaceApp to swap Mr. Beast's face with one of the Florida men for a shot. And I even asked ChatGPT some questions about Florida man that helped me flesh out my script. Not by mindlessly copying what it says, but by allowing yourself to be inspired. It mentioned that not all Florida men are like the meme, which is obvious. But by reminding me, it inspired me to include a serious section in my silly little video, which made the whole thing better because of it. 
What I'm saying is that AI doesn't have to be an enemy. It can be an actual help if used with a grain of salt, at least for now. See, that's the thing about AI. It constantly improves at a terrifying speed. There are ways AI can help you now, but it won't be long until it can just fully replace you. Doing everything you can do, but better, and faster, more efficiently. It just needs a couple more years. Every time someone posts an AI-generated image or video, the whole Twitter art community picks it apart. But over time, it'll take them longer and longer to figure out if what they're seeing is legitimate or not. Even actual artists who don't use AI occasionally get called out because they have a similar style that the AI likes to use. I understand that AI leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but surrounding yourself with a hive mind of people parroting the same ideas isn't solving the problem, and I'm honestly not sure what can. Seeing people treating YouTube videos as content to be shoveled to the unwashed masses leaves me with a bad taste in my mouth. The gurus making entire careers pretending they know how this website works, seeing projects like Quubblecop AI sucking the soul out of videos is just gross. But at the end of the day, that's all I can really say against it. And I think the same applies to AI art. It's impossible to convince an AI art enthusiast that paying for a commission is a better investment. Turning zero dollars into something is objectively better price-wise than a hundred dollars for the exact thing you want. It's not a good use of anyone's time to argue with these guys. Not to mention, the computer is faster, and gets more accurate as the user gets better explaining how to generate what they want. In a strange, roundabout way, AI artists can technically be seen as artists, in a similar way to computer programmers. They have to interpret what's in front of them and use the system to get something to work the way they want. Except I'd argue it takes a lot more experience and skill to learn a coding language, and funnily enough, like visual artists, computer programmers are also at risk of AI takeover thanks to ChatGPT. The only argument they can really make is moral, which is at best subjective opinion and at worst, a lot of AI advocates like to just insult the other side, making fun of their valid insecurities and a lot of the time not even seeing these artists as people. But this ignorance goes both ways. The Twitter art community seems to miss the fact that the average person sees AI technology as cool. And people aren't magically going to change their stance on AI when the entire Twitter art community yells at them to say that they're evil. Where's the love? Oh no! Anyway, so here I am, just screaming in the void to whoever wants to listen. How long do us real creators have left? My guess, probably about another 10 years or less. And that's a generous estimate. In the past two years alone, we've seen these models go from mashing pictures together to rendering full videos. It used to be easy to tell if an image was machine made based on the hands, but now they've gotten better at that too. Script writing has only gotten more automated because of ChatGPT, and it won't be long until a consistent AI video editing program comes along to automate that as well. There is a small bit of silver lining though. Reaction videos, lower effort true crime analysis, and lower effort let's plays seem to be the first to fall, with Quebelcop and other AI already able to replicate it. So it's easier for a computer to replicate you if you already make content in a rigid formula, like a soulless machine. I've seen some compare the fear of AI to the concerns painters had for photography back in the 1800s. When French painter Paul Delaroche famously said, From today, painting is dead. Only for photography to not replace artwork, and instead refine the craft and become a new art form in and of itself. AI is not that. I've also seen comparisons to the Luddites, a group of people who were vehemently opposed to the sudden change in technology during the Industrial Revolution. AI is not that. A neural network isn't just a new technology to get used to. Photography doesn't improve at an exponential rate. Photography is its own thing entirely, while AI art has the ability to replicate art styles exactly. The Industrial Revolution did displace jobs, but opened up new ones that led to higher working conditions. With AI, the threat isn't new machines replacing old machines, it's machines replacing human skills. At what point in AI's evolution will we have jumped the shark? And when we find that out, will it already be too late?
Now, I want to be completely honest here. I'm choosing to include this next section to give a personal window into myself, to confirm myself as a real person before it becomes too late to tell the difference. We've been on this roller coaster together for four years now, and let me tell you, it's been a wild ride. The shocking rise in mid-2020 caught me off guard. The sudden influx of support, the surge in subscribers, it was overwhelming. Fast forward to late 2021, and hitting that 100,000 milestone was beyond anything I'd ever imagined. But the journey hasn't been all highs. There have been lows, hardships, and burnout that I've grappled with. What's blown me away though is the incredible way you, my community, have rallied around me during these tough times. Your messages, comments, and shared experiences have been a lifeline. It's made me immensely grateful for the human connection we've built. However, amidst all this, there's something looming on the horizon that chills me to the bone. As technology advances, it threatens to alter the very fabric of our online existence. Will AI understand the late night editing sessions fueled by passion? Can it empathize with the burnout, the struggles, and the triumphs that we as creators go through? That uncertainty is what scares me the most. It's not just about algorithms taking over. It's about losing the genuine human connection that has sustained us through thick and thin. So, as we navigate this unpredictable future, I'm left thinking. Can the authenticity, the camaraderie we've built, survive in a world increasingly dominated by AI? That last section was written by AI. At the end of the day, who knows what the future might hold? It's entirely possible that AI can be integrated properly and used with some higher purpose. It's also possible that it'll continue going up the totem pole, replacing everyone. Maybe the AI does go rogue, and we really do see a reality like Terminator or I have no mouth and I must scream. Most likely not, we just have to ensure that Skynet stays in check. I can imagine, in a future not far from ours, the most profitable YouTube channels will all be run by neural networks. Computers don't have the human error us creators have. A computer cannot get tired. A computer doesn't take breaks. A computer doesn't have to spend hours looking into a topic because a computer already has the info on standby. I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I already have a subscriber base. I've already proven myself as a competent creator, so I can at least hope to continue on this platform. But if you ever plan on pursuing a career as a YouTube creator, then I suggest you start now, before you're mistaken as a machine.